First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rokha Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim pushing his truth and sincerity. It's going to be another installment of comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. And today I have a photograph. Okay. And at the top it says money will be gone. Houses will get old. Cars will break down. Beautiful faces will fade away. But the word of the Most High is always there. And that's of a truth. And when I saw this, you know, I immediately thought of, you know, the scriptures. You know, what, what, what do the scriptures say? Okay. And um, let's start. Because it says money will, will be gone. So let's start here in the, uh, the book of uh, Proverbs. This is the book of Proverbs 23 and 4. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Right. Yeah. You know, labor not to be rich. Okay. Cease from thine own wisdom. And um, it's it seems nowadays, you know, the more you work, you know, the more they tax you, you know, on your check. You know, so why labor to be rich? Why put in all these extra hours, you know, to only be having it taken from you at the end? Cease from thine own wisdom. So, um, you know, the real riches are, are this truth. You know, one of the things that, um, you know, we must realize is that, you know, Yahweh Bashem Yashai knows what we need. You know, the scriptures speak about take no thought for tomorrow. You know, shouldn't worry so much about, um, you know, paying the bills and whatnot. Because the Lord knows what we need. The Lord, man, he provided for us, you know, when we were uh, liberated out of, out of Egypt. Okay. Even in the wilderness. He knows what every single human uh, living organism needs. Okay, it says Proverbs 23 and 5. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? Okay, will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? Because in reality, you know, money is not even real money. You know, like I've said to the spirit, you know, money is just numbers increasing and decreasing on a, on a computer screen. Okay, that's all really what money is these days. Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Right. Riches make themselves wings. Okay. And, and, and you know, this wallet that this man is opening up might as well, you know, have some wings on it. Because money definitely comes and goes. You know, but the word of Yahweh Shem Yahashai will last forever, man. Okay, the second uh, part of the picture here says houses will get old. Houses will get old. But what does the scripture say? Son of man has no place to rest his head. This is the book of Luke 12 and 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Right. Take heed and beware of covetousness. And when you look at this word covetousness, it means... Strong's G, 4124, Pleonoxia. Pleonoxia. Greedy desire to have more. Covetousness, avarice. Okay, greedy desire to have more. Nowadays, you know, people want to, uh, you know, flex their house, <clears throat> their vehicles, you know, the money they have, their social status, their social media, you know, 
and people see that and they want more you know just like houses and cars man you know which really you you know you're you're a slave to to debt when you get a house and a car so this is Luke 12 and 15 again. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness, right? Greedy, being greedy, you know, wanting all these possessions for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth, right? Your, your life, you know, and your life is not measured by the things which you possess, no matter how big your car is, no matter how big your, your house is, or better yet, no matter how big your payment is, your car note or how, how big your uh, house note is. Because like I said before, you know, hey, especially Jake, you really don't own anything. Okay. We're slaves to debt. So houses will get old. So like you. And as you see, this third picture says uh, cars will break down, right? And and that basically falls under that same category here in Luke 12 and 15, you know? So we need, we need to take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consists it's not in the abundance of the things which he possess. It's not about how much things you own, how, you know, how many cars. How many houses, how many businesses, how many credit cards, how many bank accounts? That's that's what it seems like nowadays, man. That's what it seems like it's all about. You know. It seems, you know, it's all about, you know, what you possess. And even uh, uh you know who you're with. Beautiful faces will fade away. It says also in this photo, in this uh, photograph, beautiful faces will fade away. Well, what do the scriptures say? This is Proverbs 31 and 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Yeah. Right. You know how how good looking a person is. Hey, that that's that that could be deceitful, man. You know how much charm and 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 and, and grace and elegance and and you know how somebody carries themselves. You know that that could be very deceitful. You know, and beauty is vain because you know the more better looking someone is, the more they tend to be uh, you know, stuck up, if you will. It says here, but a woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. You know. But a woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. So that's what's going to be praised. A woman that fears Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, not a woman who's beautiful. Okay. Not their outward appearance. You know, and, and, and you know, there's a saying in the world that says, um, you know, it's what, matter, it's what matters on the inside. And that's a fact. That's a fact. That's one thing you learn in the truth that people... They're valued on, on, on their wisdom and who they are. It even tells you in the apocrypha, man. Let's see if I can find it. Let's see. This is a Sorak 11 and 2. Even, even for men. Okay, men are they're, hey, they're not they're not exempt. This is Sirach eleven and two. Commend not a man for his beauty, neither abhor a man for his outer appearance. You see, you don't commend a man, you know, just for his looks. All right, neither abhor, which means hate a man for his outward appearance. It's not about how they look on the outside. You know, it's not what they're dressed like. It's not how good a, a man looks or a woman looks, man. You know who the person that will be praised, the individual is, is the one who has this truth and who is a part of the uh, the election. Okay, so beauty, you know, a hey, fades away. What the scripture also say here in uh, the book of um, let's see, Sirach twenty five and twenty one. It says, "Stumble not at the beauty of a woman, and desire her not for pleasure." 
yeah, stumble not at the beauty of a woman because you can trip, you know, literally, you know, and figuratively trip on a woman's beauty. You know, but in really, you know, she's deceitful and she's stuck up. Same thing with men, you know, and desire her not for pleasure, right? And that's one of the things that, you know, us as men have to, you know, learn, you know what I mean? It's our appetite, you know, for carnality, you know, with women is, it, you know what I'm saying? If it's not checked, it could be your ruin, you know? This is First John 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If a man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Okay? So, yeah, love not the world. And, and a men and women, they're of the world. You know, certain acquaintances. You know, certain friendships, certain people. You're, they're of the world, you know. That's why it's, you know, very wise to, uh, you know, associate yourself with the people in the truth, okay? The, you know, opposed to the people that are out of the truth, okay? Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You love the things of the world, hey, the love of the Father is not in you. Because the Lord is not of the world. Hey, how I said, I am not of the world. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You see? For all that is in the world, the lust of the fresh, which is that, that craving for physical pleasure, that craving, okay, for the things that we see, the pride of our achievements, our possessions, you know, that is not of the Father, but of the world. So as you see in this photograph, you know, it, it's very spiritual. Money will be gone. Houses will get old. Cars will break down. Beautiful faces will fade away. But the word of Yahweh Bashim Yashai is always there. And so is he. Okay. Or she, I'm going to say, that, that, that does the will of the Lord. Okay. It says, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Most High abideth forever. You see? The world passes away. This society, this life as you know it, is going to pass away. And another society is going to come. Another world. Okay? And the cravings and the, you know, uh, the, the, the accomplishments, you know, the things of this world. You know, the things that you see and want the most. All that stuff's going to be done away with. It's, it's a new heaven and a new earth. You're going to have different thoughts, different desires. The truth is going to be in your inward part. It ain't going to be this carnal, vain, simplistic, empty world that we live in. Right? But he that do it the will of the Most High abideth forever, you see? But if you do the will of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, hey, you're going to abide with forever. You are going to be a joint heir with Yahweh Shai. You are going to inherit all things. You know, a new heaven and a new earth where you dwell with righteousness, not this vain world, okay, where you don't even own anything. What does it tell you in the, uh, let's get the book of Job. What, is, what does it say in the book of Job? This is a, uh, I believe it's in the first chapter. Yeah, this is a uh, Job one and 12 and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. Yahweh Bashim Yahshai gave and Yahweh Bashim Yahshai had taken away. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Bashim Yahushai. Right. Naked you come out of your mother's womb and naked you shall return thither. You're not going to take these things with you. Okay. But what you will take is the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding. Okay. That's going to be your salvation. 
the Most High's word is always going to be there for you in times of need. But people flake. Things get old. You see? But who's going to have your back, so to speak, in the end? Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Okay? Now, of course, there's the brotherhood. Of course, there's the uh, members of the elect. But the point is, is that this word, you know, trumps it all. You know, this is the true possession that you will, that you need to possess, that you want to possess. Okay? So Lord willing, this was edifying. This is another installment of comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Lord willing, it was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rokakwadash, that will honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone that rule well, and a sincere salutation to you, Akim and you, Akwath, that believe in sincerity. Shalom.